Oh, and they're fixing the keys on the Gear 7. The keys, they seem to have a, a habit of breaking um, with, with use, with old age. And this bit will snap off or uh, be defective. So what I've been doing is pu putting Aerodite on that little toggle that holds the key in place. Um, wrap a bit of tape over it just to hold it in place so it doesn't all drip, <coughs> um, move where you, don't, where you don't want it to go. And, um, and then with a the Dremel, you can look at one of the good keys as a guide, and then you can make this one re replicate um, the, uh, close to the shape it should be. It's easy to remove the keys if you take the take these screws out of this um, board here, and that that comes up on a hinge. And um, to get the black notes out, you've got to take the white notes out first. So you move this, this plastic strip and that allows you to push back um, okay, like this and then they'll pop up and you can lift them up. There's this little toggle here that holds them in, it's quite dark but you need to sort of um, be gentle taking them out so you don't break that or this little thing here. So the black key can come out now. So push that back and lift it up and slightly lift it forward and it'll come out. So I'm just going to use that as a guide for cutting um, the other one. That's the resin cement so it'll, um, it'll be dry overnight but you might want to leave it for a little bit and make sure you mix it up good because um, it just won't stick to the plastic otherwise. Basically with these, these kind of Dremel type tools you can get um, this to look like this very quickly. Uh, I'd advise you wear a mask or do this in a ventilated area because I'm not sure what breathing this stuff in does to your lungs. It probably, uh, probably might hurt the next day if you breathe a lot of this in. And that bit seems to work okay, um, but you could use the, you could use that one or if you gentle that one, so whichever. It's really easy to do. You just need a, a good eye and. Uh, be careful not to cut into the into the plastic, otherwise it won't sit properly. That's not far away. That's close. Maybe another mil, half a mil, and then that should fit. You don't want to take too much off, so. It's good to just keep coming back, take a bit more off, and then see if it fits down into the hole. It's not pretty, but that fits the hole perfect. Just got to be careful not to take too much of a, a nick out of there, otherwise it'll sit too far forward and catch on the white keys. You can use a hacksaw blade as well to, to, um, to take that um, notch back a little bit. Okay, that's ready. These steel rods just go in so that this bit is pointed into uh, this bit here. So you just put it underneath here. It goes on top of there. Like that. The spring steel goes in here in that T-shape. I'm going to hook it underneath. So these teeth go underneath underneath here in the holes. Whoops. And it's just really straightforward. Then you just got to locate. You can see that. And just got to locate that steel rod in there and then just push backwards and then drop that in there like that and that's done and that distance is the, the same as, as the other keys that's perfect <clears throat> so black keys black keys going first and then um, you can put the white ones in and it's as easy as that 
and then it's, that's not going to get stuck on the white on the white key. It's not too far forward. It's just just in the right distance, and that's done. These little steel tangs have a, a habit of falling off when you're trying to get them in place, and your fingers are too small to pick them up. So the best bet is to use a, a magnet to grab hold of them. Another good design feature is all the white keys are labelled so it's impossible to put them back in the wrong place. Just check they feel right because sometimes you haven't got it perfect and you've got... You don't realise until you get everything back in. So these are all good, these are all okay, that's fine. And all at the right height.